What up, everybody? This is Jack Slater, the comic outlaw, coming to you live and loud from parts unknown, traveling here and there from the multiverse. I'm here with my main man, Magnus, and we're doing Outlaw's Corner. That's right, that's right. And today's topic is the Hulk. Start us off? Just jump right into it. Oh, well, where to begin? Stanley Lee and uh, Kirby's run at the Hulk. Oh, yeah. Which most people don't understand, which I find fascinating, is he didn't start off green, he started off gray. Mm-hmm. More of a Frankenstein approach. And from what people don't realize, because they watch the old Frankenstein movies and it tends to carry on, is in the books, the Frankenstein monster was actually smarter yeah. as he came into more consciousness. Oh, yeah. He was more intelligent. Yeah. And the Grey Hall kind of, at this point, talked more. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a little more vicious. Yeah. And, of course, that changed as... Uh, <laughs> and it's kind of funny it was actually cheaper to make him green mm -hmm. he became green and more savage yeah there were well there's many stories on the whole green to gray um, and that the artist originally said that don't do gray that the printing process you know it is more expensive mm -hmm. but uh, you know I was saying Stan Lee he wanted gray and yep. he got gray and it's just like gray's not working because I guess uh, for Stan Lee Interesting enough, I think it wasn't about the money as much as just doesn't look as good. You know, I love Stan Lee, but, and I actually talked about this earlier between you and I, mm -hmm. is that Stan Lee had a, he had a, a tendency to bounce from one issue to another, you know? Yeah. Like, he'd only do so many of the Hulk and then he handed it off to someone else. Yeah. Or so many, and it's not to blame. There was a lot of, you know, boom at the time mm -hmm. and he was jumping from here to there he was creating this and that and leaving sure. it to other art he was creating the universe so you can't really yeah. fault him for that well he's an imaginative guy you know he kind of has like this childlike imagination and it's just like it's just an imaginative spark that bounces around yeah but take the x-men for example his original vision of it actually sort of flopped mm -hmm. they were doing reprints then it wasn't until chris claremont came along and he did it yeah and that's the way I feel about the Hulk. The Hulk went so far, and the, the issues were actually canceled Yeah, for a long time. Um, the Hulk was, like, canceled. He appeared here and there. Um, and he didn't really start getting back into, was it... They threw him in Astonishing Tales, right? No, it was um, Doctor was Strange. It? It was Doctor Strange thing. Mm -hmm. um, Tales of Suspense. He Tales of Suspense. Tales yeah. of Suspense, yeah. It was yeah. Tales of yeah, he was uh, thrown into that, and that did eventually start getting traction, but yeah, for quite some time, he had issues really holding, you know, its own until the 80s. Well, the Tales of Spence thing is interesting, because they ended up turning into the Hulk again. Yep, it, and it kept the number of sequences, right? It just, they just changed yeah, the title. Yeah, it went right into it, which always set up this quote-unquote friendship between him and Stephen Strange. Mm-hmm. We started what I refer to as the original Defenders. Sure. I um, mean, name you can uh, refer to that because that's Surfer. what it is. Well, yeah, but most people in comic history, since it restarted, yeah. may not or may not have never happened. But this is always like outlaw people like Wolverine made an appearance, Ghost Rider. Sure. Um, Nomad. If you guys don't know who Nomad is, Johnny Blaze. Uh, but the Hulk has that rich history. He's worked with a lot of people. Yeah. And um, I think should kind of step back back to the beginning. You oh, know, yeah. you mentioned, of course, the Frankenstein inspiration. Another big inspiration that is considered is Dr. Jekyll and oh, Mr. Hyde. Of Hyatt. course, of course. And, um, and having to deal with that duality. And you were talking about how, you know, Frankenstein, you know, had... Uh, or uh, Frankenstein's monster had intelligence. Yep. Uh, so did in a weird way, uh, uh, Mister Hyde. That you know the Actually, thing yeah, was the his yeah. his attitude was what was so animalistic and bestial that people couldn't recognize him as much as a person, as much as an animal. And you know, it's just that was like, a sociopath in Jekyll. Yeah. And so, so like some of that could be transferred to the Hulk where it's just like, especially with Ross where it's like, views the monster of course as a monster and because can't be recognized as a human. Well you have to jump into the Peter David, you know, 
run. Mm-hmm. And we started really focused on that where his father abused him and oh, yeah. it, it created these three different personalities that actually got exposed to the gamma radiation. Yeah. Um, that is the interesting thing about Hulk. That's one thing that I've always enjoyed about Hulk. And um, there was Savage Hulk, mm-hmm. which, you know, I find funny, like, everyone's surprised about the Illuminati. Doctor Strange sent Hulk into alternate dimensions long before that. Yeah. Like, when he was Savage Hulk, and he was totally insane, you know, he's in two different realities. And it said this whole Weird Tales thing with Hulk. Yeah. You know, they, they sort of talk about Age of Smash, and they don't, you know, like, certain weird things appear in different worlds, and this and that. Yeah. And then it kind of, like, settled down, the Peter Davis run happened, and there was also Grey Hulk. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fix-It. Joe Fix-It. Joe Fix-It. Well, either way. Yeah. And Joe, if you're his friend, Mr. If you know, you're paying him for something. Yeah, I gotta say, great action figure. Uh, you know, I had the mm-hmm. actual coat. Came with, a, like, a one-handed giant Gatling gun, but it mm-hmm. was kind of held more like a pistol. Yep. Yeah, it, I remember actually having a lot of fun with that one. I love Joe Fix-It. Um, he's actually, in my heart of hearts, my favorite Bruce Banner incarnation. There's an issue of Wolverine, I think it's uh, Wolverine 10. Or something like that, somewhere around there. And it's a picture of Wolverine and um, Ray Hulk. And Hulk's sitting there like this. And Wolverine's leaning against him all small. I have okay. I know and exactly what you're talking about. And through the whole thing, he hoodwinks the Hulk. Yeah. You know, like he tricks him into it. He kidnaps Banner. He appears, you know. He kind of like tricks him into the mission. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mr. Fix It, you know, he's not like super smart like Banner is, but, you know, he kind of has a normal human intelligence yeah. that is um, kind of geared towards being able to be with the tough guy He's attitude. He's more ruthless, too. Yeah. What I liked about it at the end, though, is that Wolverine tricks him because he gets all these women, and then the sun comes up. Because back in the day, before, like, it started to, like, mellow out, Bruce was Bruce in the daytime, it's more like a werewolf effect. Yeah. And he was Joe Fix It at night. Yeah. And then what do you do? Like any of the pre moves to Las Vegas and becomes a crime lord. Yeah. He, he was a gangster. Yep. So I always thought it was cool. You know, I thought that was cool. He was a fixer. It was a pleasant change. Yeah. You know, because how many times can you see Hulk smash? And I know this is an unpopular thing. They, they talk a lot of crap about this. You know, my I often say this on my show. I despise Superman. You've heard me say this. Mm-hmm. I love the blue run when he was like the blue electric being. You ever hear about that? No, I'm not familiar with that. For a short time in Justice League, his powers went like. Hey, oh, man. Superman! Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 so, yeah, no, sorry. And, yeah, they had the blue yeah. one, the red one. Yeah, it's well, just some like, people yeah. don't like the Joe Fixit thing, but yeah, like it's like the it's like the the blue Superman run, mm-hmm. and you know how much I despise. Superman, like how much I yeah. really, really, really despise Superman. Mm-hmm. I get the feeling you really despise Superman. I'm just making that clear. Um, I like the blue suit run. Yeah. Know, when he was like electric being, you know, like, and they had a bit like a containment suit. I mean, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, they had the blue one, they had the red one for very short. Even yeah, well, that was the split and, personality. Yeah, yeah that, that was when they were trying to end the run. Yeah. But when it got unpopular but the fascinating thing that I found about it is that he was super powered as Superman and then when he became whole like a whole he was Clark mm-hmm. and I thought that was cool because he did I had this one issue where he stubbed his toe and he never really felt that before just stubbed his toe yeah and he went off fighting with the Justice League for 12 hours and then he turned human and he didn't know what it was to be overly starving yeah or ran down he was cranky yeah you know, I thought that was cool. Yeah. I thought it brought a new edge to Clark or what, you know, it, it made Clark more Clark. Yeah. And it made Superman more Superman. I, I thought that was cool. Most most fans didn't. Yeah. But for me, it kept me reading. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I thought it was something new. You know, and I, I, that's what made me read. Yeah. I actually stopped reading after that. I, I thought it was a new edge on it. Yeah. You know, and it was Lois kind of explained to him, like, dummy? Yeah. You know? And uh, with Joe Fix-It, he was really his own character. Because you could take yeah. 
all the different Hulks, and they're all just Hulk with different degrees of anger and intelligence. And but like Joe Fix it, he was not Bruce Banner. He was not you know the Green Hulk. He was his own entity. Which I liked in Ultimate Spider-Man. Spoilers if you haven't seen the cartoons, like in the black and white world, the Spider-Man Noir. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Noir. 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 Um, he was Joe Fixit, and then they changed reality, and he became green. But I liked the gangster profile that he was. You know what I mean? Yeah. That take no shit, machine gun Tony. I thought they did a really good job portraying him. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. in the wrong timeline, but they did a yeah. wonderful job. And it, it actually fits too well. Like yeah, in a noir wonderful. world, you know, the Hulk himself isn't very noirish. Well, there was actually a great Hulk in Ultimate Avengers. Yeah. And it, it, it was gauntlet. It was kind, kind of, of like the gems. The Hulk with just slightly more intelligence, no, but you know, not as good as like ninety Hulk with the you know the. Well, there was two experiments because one made the Green Hulk, mm -hmm. and then he tried it again, broke out, and then there was the Gray Hulk, and like later on, like because I did not like that series. I'm not gonna. I that. I did like. Uh, the Avengers at all. I, I didn't care much for Captain America. I had to suffer through it. Like, I tried doing it. The cartoons are actually nice. Yeah. But Ultimate I, Thor was nice. I like Ultimate uh, Thor. He, he was just pretty much Thor. Ultimate Spider-Man was nice. Oh, the Ultimate Spider-Man was I amazing. I loved Ultimate Spider-Man, okay? Ultimate X-Men was pretty good, too. Yeah, except for the incest engine, Quicksilver, and time. Mm -hmm. But, like, eventually, like, Great Hulk somehow gets the Infinity Gauntlet. Because there's like seven gems in this one. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like, the Bruce Banner persona is more dangerous, unpredictable. Yeah. And actually, that's what I liked about it. That's one of the things I liked about the character. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it was the universe. I couldn't understand why it was thrown away. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Except I'm going to give props to the maker. You know who the maker is? Uh, are you talking about of? The Ultimates, yeah, yeah, or are you ultimate, talking about a character? In the maker? Ultimate Universe, yeah. Um, is it sort of like the one be above all? No, he's Reed Richards as an evil version. Oh, okay. Oh my god, that guy. I'm, I'm making an issue with him, Marvel. But we're talking about the Hulk. And he ends up disappearing in that one, but I thought I should like, at least give him credit. Yeah. He's one of those, like, carry he got the like, Infinity Gauntlet in that reality, you know? Yeah. So... We've made parallels with Frankenstein, with Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, the werewolf with Hulk. When are we going to get a mummy Hulk? When are we going to get the Invisible Hulk? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's just what we need, an Invisible Hulk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had an Invisible Girl, and God forbid her clothes disappeared, and everyone went all haywire about that. Yeah. Well, he did have a wife at one point, I do believe. Betty Ross. Yes, they did get married, and I mean, just like with Burger Comic Books, they can't just have a good thing just last. I don't know what's up with that. Especially when her father-in-law is Thunderbolt Ross. Oh, yeah. Um, in case you guys have been living under a rock, um, Thunderbolt Ross has been making sporadic appearances over the years mm -hmm. in a lot of different mediums. Yeah, I mean, he's, of course, you know, the general that he's in, uh, Marvel Comics, as well as the MCU Universe, as yep. Betty's father, and also attached with sort of what happened with Bruce Banner and the Hulk and hunting him down. And then, like, later on in the comics, he's like an affiliate of the S.H.I.E.L.D., and then, of course, he ends up transforming... Into the Red Hulk? Yes. Oh, spoilers, in case anybody hasn't read these issues from, like, ten years ago. Yeah. And it makes, perfect, about that. it makes perfect sense, because... I didn't feel that it used to be this way, but like now it's like everything is everyone trying to recreate a super soldier of Captain America. And if that is the case, and like, oh, the original Gamma experiment was to make a super soldier, and it just ended up going haywire, and that's how Bruce Banner became the Hulk. It makes sense that they'll keep on trying to do that. You know, to be honest, I actually liked the issues when they were coming out. It had a great lead to it. It, like, it didn't like drown you in the storyline, and it kept you guessing. Yeah. And then when it, it was Thunderbolt Ross in the back of your mind, you know, like... Yeah. But, like, for a while you're sitting like, hmm. And I'm going to admit there's some BS moments when 
eagles on a tear and he absorbs silver surfer's powers and then he and then he like he's riding the surfboard and he punt well as you know I'm not apologizing I loved it when he pushed the watcher. I laughed so hard to drop a pee came out. I I love that. It happens. Yeah, I loved it when the women beat his ass. That was another great part. But he was just a sexist pit you know like, and you know, you're talking about Ross and it was like the it was like Ross's other personality. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like the taste of that power. Yeah, I mean, he's a soldier boy. He has to, you know, wear the uniform and has to sit, sit behind a desk. I mean, I think part of it, of him hunting down the Hulk is he's just like hunting him down. And also, he hates him, you know. Well, that's what I found interesting because, like, when you read the issues, he's like a sexist pig. Mm-hmm. He's saying, well, you know, he's telling the girls, well, I'll stop if you and her, you know, bang, you know. He's like a real scumbag and like if you read a lot of the Hulk issues Ross is more like the the right wing you know straight up government type yeah and you the idea like given a little more power he would become this corrupt entity yeah you know drunk with his own identity and power yeah although his powers do seem like are different from Hulk um, he absorbs radiation yeah which I I guess, like, he absorbs cosmic radiation and everything else under the sun. Yeah. Because he absorbs silver surface power, which is a benefit, but it's also a negative because he can burn himself out. Yeah. Or overload. And Ross is a victim of his own ego. Yeah. Uh, and then there's another Red Hulk. Do you remember his name? For another Red Oh, the, the mustache yeah. and sunglasses. El and... Mustachio. Yeah, that's um, just another general, oddly enough. They, I guess they like picking old generals. We'll that, call him a mustache. I don't know um, it yeah, it's just he was very compatible with what they've already done to make uh, Thunderbolt Ross into Red Hulk. And they're like, well, this guy, he's compatible based off of our information. Let's just do it with him. And, well, I mean, he himself is more of a stable person, and he doesn't have, like, that hatred and he kind of has fun with it what do you mean yeah but he can only be the hulk for like one hour and then like disappears for 37 it's like one of the most that's the quickest way to get rid of a character y'all yeah give them unlimited power itty bitty little space itty bitty comic space yeah I mean dude our man's power in the JSA actually Hour of power, and then he has to wait a few, like, little bit. Yeah. You know? But it, 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 they gave, like, a better reason where it's just like, well, they found out that he's able to be more in control without, you know, going, you know, drunk with power if it's just an hour at a time. And you're just like, oh, and we have these statistics where it's like, oh, we should make him wait 37 hours after that. You know, it'd be interesting, at least that way, because then it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to keep on pushing this button because I need more time. But then, you know, he, like, he starts to, well, Hulk out. And, you know, it starts to become more dangerous. And well, so, see, that's why I think they were trying to get rid of the character, period. Yeah. Uh, well, since we were talking about Grey and Savage and Bruce, they did combine them all at one point. Um, kind of a perfect Hulk. Well, I wouldn't say perfect, but um, you were actually mentioning when we were starting to, like, brainstorm doing this show that you're talking about Samson. Yeah, um, Doc Samson, uh, he has very close relationships with uh, the government as well as uh, superheroes. He's the superhero psychiatrist, and he specializes with the Hulks, really. And he's come up with a theory that from a, a individual who gets infused with gamma radiation that the being that they become is based off of their psycho, uh, their psyche. So, with Bruce Banner, he has this past of being abused by his dad, and he actually had multiple personalities. The other guy, where he called, well, the other guy, uh, who it will eventually become the Hulk, that he learned to suppress this multiple personality to become a functioning adult. But with the gamma radiation, when Bruce Banner becomes a Hulk, it's that other personality. That's why it's not Bruce Banner. When you have She-Hulk, 
uh, She-Hulk is this uh, Jennifer Walters where she's this actually pretty weak woman but you know she has this heart of gold that she became a lawyer because she wants to defend people and inside she's a beautiful woman and a beautiful strong woman and so when she becomes She-Hulk she's this big beautiful strong woman and um, the abomination he's a horrible human being so he yeah. physically looks like a horrible human being. Actually, I think they did a good job in that Edward Norton movie. Yes. You know what? Like, people don't give that the credit it deserves. It was the official second MCU movie. And, yeah, yeah it had a good ending fight scene. Um, There's a nice and, build to it. Yeah, and I even liked him in his human form where he's just like Yeah, this... we was running... Yeah, Tim Roth did a great... Tim Roth, right? I do believe it was Tim Roth. That sounds about right. Yeah, he did a great job. He was good in Reservoir Dogs. And, yeah, he saw the Hulk's power, and he's like, I want that. Yeah. yeah. Um, look at um, Rick Jones. <laughs> he had a taste of the power. He became like that blue guy. What was his name? Like, he was like an armadillo. Yeah, it was weird. Comics get weird. War so no. Yes, it does. Um, Betty Ross, since we are talking, became the Red She-Hulk. Yeah. Since we were dropping spoilers. Uh, she ended up and- well, she's also, once again, inside a beautiful, strong woman. But the thing is, she has issues with the death of her mother, her father, you know, being too strict, but then also but wanting to murder Bruce. her, the man she loves. And, you know, she's had a miscarriage. You Not know, to mention that was a thing. Bruce is still, yeah. A miscarriage is something they try to sweep under the rug. Yeah, which I, guess, but, which I like to pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> You know, we, but it happened. Well, we don't like. We all like to pretend what happened to Carol Danvers and the Avengers in two hundred. You know. But yeah. We, we, I guess we're sweeping that under the rug too. Yeah, and but, yeah, and so, that crops up when she's Sea Hulk. You know, she becomes very violent, but then like, also becomes very emotional and can like lose control, as in, like, lose control of uh, Red She-Hulk, and, you know. What I like, like, later on, like, in the 80s, like, later on when she learned, or when she becomes Hulk almost full-time, or She-Hulk, mm-hmm. she's, like, a lawyer and stuff like that. Okay, for Walters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, I loved how she became a, like, I talked about this in one of my other top tens, like, other Fantastic Four members. I loved how she was a great feeling in the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. You know, she balanced out really well. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Or in the X Men, like X Men versus Fantastic Four, they had her as an added member for Muscle, yeah. and it made sense. Yeah, she got along well with the family. I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, she's a really good team player. Yeah, and like later on, they kind of slut her up. Yeah, you know, let's call it what it is. Yeah, you know? um, she, God, I mean, I'm sure the list is pretty big, but the two that popped out was uh, Star Fox, which they actually dealt with that in an issue of She Hulk. Yeah, they where uh, she realized that Star Fox used his powers of making uh, people like him a lot, and so bone that way. She probably did mm. anyways, but he did use her his let powers. Me, let me explain this for the people out there who doesn't know what that means. That means if I had this power, I could walk up to a beautiful woman. Like, let's just say like a Jessica Rabbit status. Mm-hmm. You guys don't know what I mean? Watch. Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? He's sort of a va voom kind yeah, of. Yeah, let's say rogue. All right, all right. Without the powers, you know, you're like, baby, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I want to make incredible love to you. I'll do whatever you need, whatever you desire. Now, pull on your pants and bend over so I get busy in the dumpster, and then afterwards go buy me a drink. Mm-hmm. You know that kind of like scumbag level with this fool. Yeah. And once again, She-Hulk probably would have just did it anyways. Mm. Well, I mean, I believe she's also had relations with, well, Tony Stark, but that's not unheard of. So did Gamora. And we're going to throw that so out Gamora, there. So did Gamora, yeah. Um, and, you know, so did uh, Janet, you know, Wasp. That happened. Well, yeah. Um, but anyways, but, you know, She-Hulk, you know, she has had relationships, but, you know, uh, <clears throat> eventually she has issues dealing with her human self because why she can freely transform she because she has so much control of herself she can uh, transform freely but why would you be this weak woman when you could be she-hulk 
Yeah, that's what it said. The power started shifting yeah. at one point. And then, like, she could control it. Sometimes she couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I think that was based on her emotions because she had more control over it. Uh -huh. And Bruce did. And later on, like, I guess, like, now she's more powerful. She could do more. But, it, it, like, it makes her more savage. Yeah. So it's like what you, like, put into it. Well, she did have a blood transfusion from Bruce. Yeah, that's, that's how she got her did skip. Yeah, she was shot. Bruce had no choice but to give her a bland blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. So it would make more sense that her powers are more based on anger. Yeah. Which is interesting. And most people never see this. And I always talk about this because they're like, why is she so weak? Because she has more control. Mm -hmm. When you have more control over your anger, you can stay constant, but you can't peak. Yeah. That was like, well, I was talking to you about Professor Hulk. Mm -hmm. You know, it, and that was another problem. That, like, they really had a Professor Hulk. He was a com combination of the Savage Hulk, the Grey Hulk, and Bruce. Yeah. So he had the intelligence, but he couldn't peak yeah. anymore. I mean, but he's had forms where he's most definitely peaked. World Breaker Hulk. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yep. And he's called World Breaker Hulk. The Devil I mean, Hulk as well. Enough said. Definitely. Just throwing that one out there. Oh, well, I had to. You were talking about that one, um, like the dark side of the Hulk or whatever. Yeah. Like, I've heard about it in Whispers. I've seen it in comic books, like this weird yellowish Hulk. Yeah. But, I don't know. That's neither here or there. I like to talk about World Breaker Hulk. I, oh, So, it stems from yeah. World, uh, well, Planet Hulk to World War Hulk. Illuminati before that, too. Illuminati before that. And so, effectively... Uh, TDL, TDL, I'm messing up TLDR is so the Avengers Illuminati who's the leaders who's who's of the Marvel Universe get together like Hulk did Hulk things in Las Vegas or oh, he became Joe Fix it again anyways need Hulk not to do Hulk things anywhere makes us look bad what do we do and they're like well just for those out there you guys know who the Illuminati is? Anybody? Or oh, is Strange? Was it Strange? Mm -hmm. Doctor Reed, Strange. Professor X. Namor. Namor. And Iron Man, right? Black Panther? Is Black Panther in it? Black Panther ended up leaving and then they substituted Captain America after a while. Yeah. And then they wait. Captain America. It's really dirty. Yes. They end up wiping a Captain America's mind. Anyway, so they concoct a, steam, uh, a scheme like villains where it's like, Oh, well, we'll have Bruce Banner go up to one of Stark's satellites that will be, uh, that has a gamma issue, and Bruce Banner is the leading man for gamma issues and can fix it, but really, Reed Richards like, oh, there's this planet with very little life on there, Hulk can't really hurt anyone, let's shoot him over there into space, and so they do that, and Bruce Banner's like, you know I'm gonna come back, right? You're not gonna like this. A wormhole opens up. He kicked it off course. That was nothing. Yeah, he kicked it off course. There was a wormhole that sent him to a uh, Star 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 it, cars. I don't know. It's what was in the Thor movie, that junk world with the yeah, wormhole. Yeah, but it wasn't that's the junk where, world. Yeah, the yeah, they got that idea from it, and so Hulk ends up on this planet where there's effectively red ants that keep the white ants down. They commit genocide on the black ants, and Hulk ends up doing uh, into a gladiator pit. Well, yeah, they made him a slave. The, yeah, and you know, Hulk did Hulk things, and Ooh. just... All right, I want to bring this up now, because like people are going to ask why they control the Hulk. They had these little discs. Yeah. Well, he was, he was weakened from the wormhole. It really messed him up, yeah. and then they had this electric disc on him, on, and the same thing happened to Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer went through a wormhole. Ended up there. In the cartoon and is the, the guy from Thor. Uh, Better Way Bill. Bill. That guy is awesome. He, they make him a jobber. That's another discussion. Yeah, but I was doing that out there. I love Beta Ray Bill. Uh -huh. well, last of his species, right? Well, no, he was an alien hybrid. Mm -hmm. Like He guards them, and he's like the, the robot, like Robocop, sort okay. of. Beta Ray, I just thought that was a nice appearance. I don't care if he was jobbing. Yeah. Someone had to do the job. I was just glad it was kind of cool. I, no. Love those so I got a story with him and She-Hulk and Champion, but finishing uh, World War Hulk. Oh, we gotta go back to that one. Okay, World War Hulk. So Hulk does Hulk things on Circadia, whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, it becomes like a rebel. He joins like a group. 
Well, he doesn't join the group as much as the group's like, mm. join, a, oh, 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 in the gladiator pits, yeah. yeah. And they're like, there's a pro- prophecy of the green scar, you have green blood, you're going to, you know, free us Hulk's well, like. blood brings like Hulk not life happy. to the planet. Hulk friend betrayed Hulk. Hulk not happy. Hulk smash. And the, uh, yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, he beats the Red King, he becomes king, he marries his beautiful assassin chick. So there's these other aliens that live on this world. They're kind of like super shadow ninja Jedi people that for some odd reason were honor bound to the king. Anyways, Hulk now king and so has this a very beautiful woman who ends up having, you know, taking some Hulk dong and has a Hulk baby in her. And so I mentioned the genocide of black ants. Uh, so the black ant aliens, what few are left, orchestrated thing that Hulk needs to smash. Hulk's not, well, Hulk smashing someone. Oh, but, you mean that that weird six arm thing? In so, the, so, uh, what was his name? Mech? Meek? Meek, yeah. Okay, that was also in the Thor movie. The Rock Guy, who was another one. The Rock Guy was, was actually pretty cool. I like yeah, that. uh, you know, that of the alien guy that ends up dying and then becomes a baby. That's him in the comics. Anyways, he's like... He was Hulk. actually in Thor, too. The yeah, in the Thor movie, yeah. yeah. No, in the comic, too. Oh, okay. In Astonishing Tales, he was one of the original... Oh, the rock movie. guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually, that wasn't the same rock guy. So, um, I believe in the first Thor movie, Thor, like... No, second Thor movie. Whatever Thor movie. Uh, destroyed one of those rock guys. That was a direct reference to that comic. Well, yeah, when the com- yeah, I just thought it was cool. It was a nice throwback. You know? Yeah, I thought that was kind of awesome. Anyways, Black Ant is like Hulk not smashing. Hulk needs to smash, and so it's like, hey Hulk, there's something weird. Remember that ship you came on that went through the wormhole? Come over here, and Hulk and uh his queen and his queen go over there. And it's like, oh, what's weird? And so he rigged it to blow up. It actually killed his queen. And the black ants like, oh, they were trying to kill you originally, didn't you know that? That's weird. And well, Hulk's he like, kind of assumed it was sabotage too, because all the times he tried screwing them over. Yeah, and know. which it wasn't true. It was actually the black ant who sabotaged it. But yeah, Hulk's like, I should go back to Earth He's and start buster. smashing. So Hulk goes back to Earth. He oh. goes to smash the Illuminati because. Let, let me do this. Okay, go on. humans. So. I have come to smash. I was happy once. And then they took away my existence. And now I would destroy each and every one of them. Oh, dude, we forgot Black Bolt and Illuminati. Oh, yes. He was in it. I guess I screw the immortals. By the way, Submariner voted no. Everyone else voted yes. Except for Professor X. He wasn't there that day. Okay. He probably would have voted yes. Well, because they, they did this whole X-Men issue. Have you actually seen the World Horror Hulk where he actually invades the institution? He doesn't, like, it's... Professor X was having a bad day. He decimates the X-Men, dude. Like, Colossus, he actually gets his hands and breaks them. Yeah. And, oh, my God, dude. Hulk just rules in that yeah. one. Yeah, Hulk goes to Earth. And all the heroes are trying to stop Hulk from smashing everyone. Well, actually, and some so of the he... heroes join him. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, like, it started, like, this whole civil war, like, a mini-civil war. Yeah. Which, I... I agree with the Hulk. Yeah. I mean, like, I... I understand where he's coming from. He's been screwed over. He finally found a place he was happy at. I... I just... And I, I never had a lot of pity for the Illuminati. Yeah. I mean, and the writers and editors couldn't give him a year as King Hulk... That would have been cool. You know, they could have at least waited for the baby to be born. Well, the baby. That's, yeah, the that's, shutter car instead of shutter car. Yeah, which is cool. I like the character. I liked him in Ages of Smash. Yeah. But, um, anyways, Hulk smashed everyone. And I, I believe it actually mentally smashed Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange went into Hulk's psyche. You want you want to talk about that? Yo, dude, I love, I, that's one of my favorite. Like, I love the whole World War Hulk. You know, I can tell that each fight went down. I'll tell them. Um, Doctor Strange tried to like appeal to his friendship, go into his head, talk to Bruce. Literally go into his head, mm-hmm. like magically. And the astral plane, they're talking. And uh, he has this one moment, and then Bruce, this is one of those times, this is what made... Worldbreaker Hulk so powerful mm-hmm. is that both were in the same mindset. 
they are both angry. Yes. Every being, every part of Hulk was angry. And, like, in real life, he grabs Strange's hands and crushes them. Yeah. And he has to get these uh, maces, which are like a uh, demigod, you know, come back and fight him. Yeah. And I just love how he crushes his hands, you know. It's like, yeah, which Doctor Strange's hands are important. That's what eventually yeah, made him become Doctor Strange. So, so, gets to smash, so. Yeah, like, it was it was interesting. Like, uh, it took the century, actually, to stop him. It was centuries. Anyways, and, no, they're careful. Frankly, not what I'm talking about. Why not? Not a good character. I always found him amusing. Yeah. Well, he well he's one of the Hulk's friends, I guess. Like. Yeah. Oh, I we, mean, well, well, since we're um, what about Rick Jones? The that is is that the kid that yeah. was okay? Yeah, the armadillo that we mentioned earlier. Okay, but he he was the kid that was saved by Bruce Banner. Yeah. Okay, so. Way, way, way back when, when, so the reason that Bruce Banner became the Hulk, they were doing a gamma bomb test, and some kid was driving out on the field, even though it wasn't supposed to, and Bruce is like, oh no, gotta save him, and goes out, saves him, uh, kid's fine, but Bruce Banner becomes Hulk, and that is Rick Jones, which he's, I think twice has gotten superpowers. Yeah, well, actually more than that. He's gotten powers here and there. Yeah. Um, he's he's actually a member of the Avengers at one point, even though he had no powers. Yeah. He was like the snapper car, I guess, to the Avengers. Yeah. Uh, my favorite actual appearance of him is in one of the, I think it was a Hulk issue, where after one of the devastations of the Hulk, he's there with like a team of people. When I say team, I mean volunteers, where they go... And they clean up the mess. They fix up houses. Damage control. Yeah, and they uh, yeah, and it's just like yeah. I felt bad because it the Hulk is my fault. If I wasn't where I wasn't supposed to be, there would have never been a Hulk. All this damage won't be done. So now he tries to clean up after the Hulk's mess. It's hard. Like if I had to pick a, a favorite Rick Jones appearance, it would have because it leads into one of my favorite Hulks, alternate Hulks, is um, the alternate Rick Jones. That brings back Professor Hulk to face the Maestro. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, so, dude. I'm a sucker for the Maestro. Talk about the Maestro. Oh, he was a Peter David creation. He's an alternate Hulk where there's a big war. Well, it's kind of changed with the new Marvel, mm -hmm. but he's like the he's one of the lone survivors. He's killed a lot of the heroes. He's become ultra powerful. He's a lot older but smarter. He, and he got bombed again, so he yeah yeah he was, was he's that. actually stronger than most Hulks. Yeah, with that savagery. Yeah. You know, and he's a lot older, which kind of slows him down, mm -hmm. as they kind of later revealed um, with Old Man Logan. Yeah. Which I didn't mind. That was a nice appearance. Guys, mm -hmm. check that out. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought that was cool. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was only a two-parter, but it left you thirsty for more. And Rick Jones, like, kind of like freedom fighter, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. And the only reason it meant something to me is because it introduced the maestro. Yeah. And later on, the maestro appears over and over again you know and I always thought that was a cool character it's a smart sinister version of the Hulk yeah we had green and powerful and I thought it was one of those underutilized characters yeah you know just one thing I thought I'd bring up you know very cool if I remember correctly Maestro has kids right yes and he has a lot of women <laughs> yeah and but there's a scene actually where like he breaks Professor Hulk's neck and his healing and he has a chick like literally have her way with him in the comic. Like, it looked like Betty Brant. Mm -hmm. And Hulk got mad about that. It, it, Peter Davis, man, I, I gotta say, like, he has a way of insulting a good guy with a bad guy and yet yeah. doing it in a very eloquent yet messed up way. Yeah. I have to give it to him, like, very psychological, you know. And that's actually why the run got so popular. I mean, I, I have to praise the man's work, you know, just that subtle eloquence. Yeah. And yet savagery all at the same time. We got sidetracked. We were talking about World Breaker Hulk. Oh, of course. Well, we had to see Peter Davis praise. Yeah. Um, we're talking about Greg Paxton. Yes. So, World Breaker Hulk. Uh, World Breaker Hulk, ultra powerful, basically all the rage, everything put together. You were mentioning the in syncness between Bruce Banner. Anger okay, at and this point, Clinton. at this point, they've melded into just two beings. Yeah, like Hulk and Bruce have kind of formed this alliance. They were happy on Shadow Car, both of them. Mm 
They found everything they wanted. A woman, a kingdom, you know. Every, so Baruch, Respect from all the people. Love. Yeah, 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 love. And all that was taken away. So both of them were in sync. Mm. That's the theory that, that the anger was completely focused on them. Yeah. And as the creature grew more powerful, it the anger had no control over it. Yeah. And that's what made Worldbreaker Hulk. I think eventually they ended up sending him to the depths, you know, as the story went on. Like later on in the Great Pack. That's spoilers because we have so much of the Great Pack series to talk about. Like he becomes so powerful. Her, him and Red She-Hulk in the fight in another realm where the rage is unboundless. It's, you know. Yeah. And it had to be quelled. I mean, that's what Worldbreaker Hulk is. Pure, unadultery. World, that's why they call it the Worldbreaker. Yeah. And um, I always thought that was an interesting thing. Um, they don't. T they kind of give you like a, a hosh posh end at the end of it, mm -hmm. but they're not gonna have him shatter the world. So what yeah. can you do in that situation? Yeah. I'm sure there's an altered dimension where he he smashed world. I'm not trying to give too much spoils away because I want people to read the Planet Hulk series. I want people to read World War Hulk. Yeah, the Great Pack series, uh, even before yeah. that with the Peter Davis. That's why I'm like kind of like they're in trade paperback. Like, you know, of course. You know, that's why I'm trying to, like, touch on things, but, you, you know, get people to read it. Yeah. Um, Worldbreaker Hulk is just so cool. He's made sporadic appearances, people claim. Mm -hmm. um, there's a new Immortal Hulk. You've heard about that? Not happened. Okay, first Hulk in the new Marvel, I guess, like, Amadeus Cho is, like, this 12-year-old genius. He's, like, the fifth smartest person in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, like, a kid. He absorbs Hulk's power and he becomes something like the Incredible Hulk or the Wonderful Hulk or like he's real egotistical. Like basically Shazam. Yeah. If Shazam was the Hulk and he got really boring and they ended up giving him back to Bruce for a while and then uh, Bruce ends up getting killed in Civil War Two with that arrow from Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. um, Hydra, Captain America brings him back in Secret Empire for a little bit. Him, you know, and he dies again, and then apparently he wakes up again, and he's Bruce Banner. Like it's kind of like the the Joe Fixit thing, yeah. Where he's Bruce Banner by day, and this immortal being by night, yeah. So like you could kill him, set him on fire, I just do the Freddy Krueger thing and bury him in a junkyard, and then have a dog pee on his ashes, and apparently the Hulk will always rise, yeah. So that, that's basically like where it's at with him. Yeah. So they've been doing that whole thing, which I, I guess is okay. Yeah. I mean, they could have just went with killing factor. I mean, Hulk can regenerate bone. I mean, I guess one Hulk we could talk about is Hulk the End. Mm. A if if you feel like uh, having your eyes misty, uh, the End series is just yeah, showing, where he, showcasing different heroes die. like Punisher the End and stuff yeah. like that. So Punisher the End was really good too. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say that, like... So, like, Hulk really the end, uh, it's Bruce Banner, very far in the future, that mm -hmm. whenever Bruce dies, he becomes the Hulk. He has no choice. And Hulk has a healing factor. Hulk can eat rocks and sand all day and live on that. So, it's just Bruce Banner in the future world that's just a desert because, you know, the mm -hmm. sun's expanding. It was so and, sad, too. And it that. just... Hulk, desert, cactus, and insects. The world is ru ru run by insects. So every day, Bruce Banner dies from thirst, dehydration, um, suicide, being eaten by bugs, mm -hmm. and he turns into the Hulk. And you know, the bugs are eating Hulk. Hulk's eating bugs at the same time. And um, eventually it ends where finally Bruce Banner... I'm, I'm going to spoil the end of Hulk the end. Yeah, yeah. But Bruce Banner dies finally from natural causes just old yeah. and then he permanently becomes the hulk yep and um yeah so there's that one hulk the end well there's a lot of like hulk things like um the what if issues mm -hmm. had a nice sporadic mix of um hulk stuff uh like a wolverine is a pivotal character in hulk yeah um wolverine first appeared in a hulk who i think yes when he was but yeah. Yeah, it was like a three way rumble that wasn't. Yeah. But uh Wolverine's one of those characters that have kind of always appeared. He's actually a friend of his mm -hmm. in a lot of the incarnations. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if like you, you know, the Fantastic Four run where the Fantastic Four sort of disappeared, and it was um, Joe Fix It, Spider Man, a uh, Wolverine, and Ghost Rider. It's a good team. They were the Fantastic Four for a while. It feels like a Defenders team more than anything else, but yeah. You know, it was so cool. They actually did a what if. They actually would have stayed the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, dude. I love that. That was one of my favorite favorite runs, dude. Yeah. Like, because it was just such a, like, hodgepodge of characters, you know? Yeah. I Like, I love the whole what if series. Or what if uh, Wolverine killed, back to my original point, they have Wolverine, like, what if Wolverine killed Hulk? Mm-hmm. And what if Hulk killed Wolverine? And, you know, like, the what if Hulk killed Wolverine is a pretty basic story. You know, he yeah. kills him, and he goes on a rampage, and then no one can stop him. Or, yeah. But the, the Wolverine killed Hulk one is actually pretty interesting because it makes Wolverine an international outlaw. Yeah. Like, he just killed the number one guy. And uh, he has to join Magneto just for that situation. Yeah. Like, um, Hulk has had, like, such a fun mythology over the, like, what if series. Yeah. Like, uh, little cameos and everything like that. Um, Hulk was, like, for a long time, like like I said before, like a, a cameo machine. Yeah. Appearing here and there. Uh, especially in movies, cartoons. Um, people don't understand there was a 60s run. Mm-hmm. You know, that I keep talking about. Um, Hulk has had different cartoons over the years. Yeah. Oh, sh- dude. Besides the Lou Ferrigno run. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you've... You, everyone knows about the Lou Ferrigno run, right? Yeah. Why right now? Yeah, with, with the sad, like, a, you know, it's like, yeah. If you guys seen Family Guy, there's Stewie, like, imitating it. Yeah. It's been a meme now. Um, it had Lou Ferrigno in it. Yeah. They actually mentioned that they parody it, and, like, I love you, man. Hmm. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. you never seen I Love You, Man? No. Oh, dude, it's like a, like a told bachelor story, but Lou Ferrigno guest stars. Yeah. And I'm going to skip a lot of the, the crap in the story because we're talking about the Hulk. Mm-hmm. But he's selling the Hulk's house, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, it's totally funny because it's Lou Ferrigno. It's a big statue of Lou Ferrigno like this, and there's pictures of him as the Hulk. Yeah. There's a whole movie. And it's just really funny because Lou Ferrigno, like, actually chokes out the guy from How I Met Your Mother for calling him Hulk. Okay. Yeah, it's absolutely hilarious, dude. Yeah. And it's funny how, like, He's become that popular. Lou Ferrigno was actually the Hulk a couple times in the, the cartoons. Mm-hmm. Where uh, he's the voice of the Hulk, where Bruce Banner is. Yeah. Bruce Banner being like the guy going, oh. Yeah. It'd be hard for him to do it now. He, uh, Lou Ferrigno has hearing issues. And, so, yeah. And you can hear, because he kind of talks like this. He can't hear himself. That's so, why they have him do the, oh, thing. Yeah. Now. And, like, uh, any cameo appearances, he really has to focus on his speech and hope he's doing it right. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, yeah, he has just these big hearing aids. But, yeah. Well, he actually made this appearance on a, um, Comic Book Men. Hmm? Have you actually seen Comic Book Men? I've seen a few episodes. Where they try to get one of the guys in shape. He's actually the guy they based Randall on. But he has a big beard. Like, oh, his name's escaping me right now. And Lou Ferrigno actually takes him through the ropes to train him. And you can see his hearing aids, dude. You know, like, he actually talks about it. Yeah. You know, I, I actually think Lou Ferrigno's cool. Yeah, you I think he's a really cool guy. Plus, he, uh, at one point, I guess, pulled a bus with his teeth or something like that. What? I, 70s, dude, what can I say? Well, yeah, I mean, he is a buff dude. I've heard rumor. I wasn't alive at this time. I've only heard bold claims. Oh, anyways, I was telling you about a She-Hulk story with Beta Ray Bill and the mm. Champion. So, the... Is this the kind of story that I'm hoping is going to be? No, it's just interesting enough. Sorry, but, uh... So, All right, just thing, gotta make sure. The Champion is a primordial. Uh, if you've seen the Marvel movies, the Collector is a primordial. They all have a thing that they love. And the only thing that keeps them alive is their own willpower. Mm. And if you have been alive since the beginning of the universe, you get bored pretty easy. So they all have a thing, their hobby, that they love more than anything else. The champion loves fighting. And so he's always looking for the well, top Well, they had a games master, too. Yeah, a games master. Uh, the gardener is one of them. His thing the is gardening. Cool, yeah. So, yeah, the collector collects. But anyways. Thanos ends up killing his ass. So the champion, you know, he's duking out with people. One of them is Betty Ray Bill. I feel so bad for him because, like, Betty Ray Bill's a jobber, 
He'd be an amazing herald for Galactus. Like, legit. All right, just... Yeah. Yeah, I don't think people know what a jobber is. Oh, okay, well, you're the wrestling guy, so... Okay, a jobber is a wrestling term. Just so you guys, like, if you ever watch wrestling, like, oh, that guy loses all the time. Okay, the jobber in kayfabe is the guy that does the job, the guy that takes the beating, the guy that gets power slammed. Yeah, they 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 take the fall that they themselves mm-hmm. are great, but they lose to make everyone else look good. Dolph Ziggler. Um, I think a good science fiction yeah, man. Uh, one would be Worf from Star Trek. Oh, an my amazing God. fighter, but gets his butt kicked every scene Didn't you see. Did they call that like the Worf syndrome in like, yeah. GS? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe it is a TV trope, uh, uh, Worf syndrome. Yeah. Anyways, so Beta Ray Bill gets beat up by the champion who has the Infinity Stone, uh, Infinity Gem of Power. Yeah. So, it kind of changed. So then, like, She-Hulk, like, is up next, and, you know, it's just like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, you're just throwing me in. You want a good fight? You know, I need to, you know, I need to get good. I need to train. So, you know, she's like, I need to train. And it's like, well, don't train as She-Hulk. Train as Jennifer Walter. So when you transform, you'll be more buff. So as Jennifer Walters, you know, she's lifting weights, all that stuff. So she's pulling the sand. Yeah. And then when she transforms, she's... Well, you know how, like, she's buff now? They did that originally, except the artist, he did very soft-looking people. So she was buff, but she still looked very soft. And the champion's like, you're still you? Like, you're, like, really buff. And and then she also like, don't you want to remove that little power gem if you want to fight? Because, you know... You're going to win. Like, do you just want to win? And he's like, I don't need this. I'm the champion. And so they fight, and she just, boom. You know, she beats the living daylights out of him. And the champion is no sla- uh, you know, slouch either. But um, going, I, I actually had a point to this, besides Bay Ray Bill is a jobber, and I wish oh, he I wasn't. I, I'm enjoying this, dude. Keep going. Anyways, so we were talking about the Hulks and their psychology. Uh, you know, she found this newfound strength. Uh, she had, you know, this lover. She's doing great in court. Uh, uh, you know, she's a superhero lawyer. She represents different people. And she, st- and, you know, once again, why would you want to be Jennifer Walters when you could be She-Hulk? She started developing an issue where she couldn't transform back to Jennifer Walters. Mm-hmm. You know, and because, like, she had this mental block that caused a physical block. So, yeah, the Hulk's very attached to psychology. Well, yeah, like I'm saying, it's like a lot of power to embrace, a lot of power to get used to. Oh, yeah. And that's why I think there's a lot of checks and balances in the Hulk. Like a Red Hulk, his powers were artificial. Mm-hmm. Like you are saying it's part of the super soldier thing, so it had different results. Yeah. But anything that seems to be like a direct descent, even on Madea's show, had problems with it later on. Yeah. The creature inside of it. And uh, that was, that was kind of like the, the blessing and the curse of being Hulk. Yeah, it's like it's like having unchecked power, but are you strong enough to take it? Yeah, and maybe like let's say if Captain America became Hulk, like he wouldn't be Maximum Hulk. There's actually either. a series where Red Hulk actually makes a bunch of different Hulks. Yeah, where there's Captain America Hulk and Deadpool Hulk. Like his whole thing was off. Deadpool. Hulk. There's all You're kinds of different. Me. Yeah, they made there's Deadpool all Hulk. Hulk. That, and there's all different. It was only for a short time. <laughs> You know, it's like one of those, here it is, and there it's gone. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, uh, they totally pulled a 50s trick on you. Yeah. Like, today, the entire Just Leave Gorillas. Oh, just kidding. Yes. We're back to reality, you know. I am, was it gorillas or was it chimpanzees? Gorillas. They were gorillas. Okay. Yeah. Chimpanzees wait, are wait, funny. Actually, th- later on, they retconned that, actually. Yeah, there, there's an actual. Detective Chimp. Yeah, there, there's like, a universe where everyone's chimpanzees. It's just everyone are just chimpanzees. Yeah, because Detective Chimp is supposed to be Batman from that world. Yeah. Spoilers. Dark Knight Metal. But um, we've mentioned the Defenders and Doctor Strange quite a few times. Of course. So the Defenders is a temporary team. Yeah, the Strange calls together. Yeah, uh, to fight a very specific major issue that one of them wouldn't be able to take on by themselves. Yep. And it's not like the Avengers where they normally have uh, whatever members hanging out at yeah, the same time. Yeah, or anything like that. Yeah, and more often than not, it's Doctor Strange, the Hulk, Silver Surfer, and Submariner. Yeah, of course. None of these heroes are 
anything to sneeze at, you know. Well, you know what? I always liked Submariner, and that's actually how I got to know the character. Yeah. He's um, he's not a cool guy. He's kind of a jerk, but, like, he owns it. It's just like, hey, I'm super powerful. I'm the king of 70% of the world because I'm the king of the ocean. You know what he reminds me of? is Black Adam. That's a very good comparison. He doesn't, he doesn't remind me so much of Aquaman, because yeah. people always make that comparison. I think he reminds me more of Black Adam. Yeah. He has that same personality. He loves his people. They have pointy ears. You know, yeah. Of well, pointy ish. Of go, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool too. I. That's a good point. Yeah. But you know, they have that same love for their people. Yeah. He's a man of his word. When he gives his honor bound word, mm -hmm. that's the one thing about Black Adam. You know, once he gives his word of honor on his people, yeah, he'll follow it. Namor's the same way. He has mm -hmm. comrades that he respects through battle. Yeah. Which is why I think that's the reason he walked away from the vault from the Hulk. You know, and the Illuminati voting for that. Yeah. You know, they it was his comrade, his his brother and all the blood. And know? well Submariner out of all of them, he's the most sort of outcast of all. Well he became a bad guy too. He joined the evil Illuminati. I'm sure. He's the only guy that went back and forth. The Illuminati was yeah. Thanos, uh Girl Loki, uh who else? Doctor Doom. No, Doom actually became the ruler of the universe after the whole thing. Yes, he should be. Yeah. And then a molecule. There's a whole thing where the universe blew up. This is before all new different Marvel, and then it kind of came together in different patches. Yeah. Maestro was in that one, too, in the Hulk series. Oh, my God. Yeah. And uh, Molecule Man was holding things together, and uh, they, they um, saved the world. Miles Morales gives the Molecule Man a cheeseburger. Yeah. Yeah, the universe changes. and Yeah. Spider but, yeah. yeah, the Black Adam comparison is really good because Black Adam, most of the time he's a villain, but there's plenty of times he's a hero. He's just like, hey, I'm a big picture kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys don't see things my way because you're all stupid, but I'm the best. You all suck, but this needs to be handled. Yeah, that's what I liked about these different characters. It was so many different, vastly different egos. Yeah. And, I, and then they throw another character, sometimes Spider-Man. Yeah. Sometimes a uh, cloak from Cloak and Dagger. Sometimes Moon Dragon. Mm -hmm. You know, like all these like different elements, you know, as a grab bag of unknown and known heroes, which I thought was so cool. Well, the Defenders, more Ghost often than Rider, not... Ghost Rider in the 90s, you know. Yeah. You know like, more often than not, the Defenders are a team of people that are not team players. You yeah. know, it's just like... And it, often supernatural as well. Yeah, and it's just like... Whatever they have to deal with, you know, it's like Silver Surfer, Cosmic Power, Doctor so Strange, cool. Sorcerer Supreme, Hulk, the yeah, best at smashing, yeah. you know. And, you know, Moon Dragon, an amazing psychic. Yeah. Uh, Spider Man, Spider Man, you know. Wolverine, you know, Johnny Blaze, who was the original he, Ghost Rider. Yeah, like at he's. At this time, fired Hellfire from his shotgun. Yeah. I, uh, but it's like Cloak and Dagger, like all these unknown, you know, kind of hidden heroes, you know, at that time. Yeah. It gave spotlight to new heroes too, which I enjoyed. Yeah. Plus Namor. But um I I know you haven't seen Hulk and Agents of Smash. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Which is a good segue because as cartoony as it was, and it was cartoony. You know, it was built for kids, but it was also built for those fans that have been reading. Because mm -hmm. they mentioned Joe Fix It. They mentioned Ghost Rider. They have a whole cosmic scale in one of the seasons. You know, they they do a lot of tributes to a lot of the old Hulk stuff. You know, like, and then it's a team of Hulk, Red Hulk, his son. Well, they, they kind of hint at it, you know what I mean, in the yeah. show, but they never fully say it. You know, like, it had, like, um, uh, Rick Jones, you know, had, like, a lot of good characters, you know, like all the different Hulks. It was in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. it, and it was, like, a little small town. I thought it was cool, you know. Yeah. It had that, that feel to it, you know. And then they did, like, this webcam thing, which I'll admit live webcam they do like interviews where they were talking to each other yeah or sort of arguing but it gave it that fantastic force where they fought with their family yeah in some ways and I, I did appreciate that yeah and like all the characters they introduced were so I mean we're talking Galactus e, like the ego like the planet of the ego not yeah you know like so like he kind of kept it more in the comics which I thought was nice yeah so great in the Hulk mythology I love that series just for that reason. So, there is a problem with the Hulk, and some characters have this issue. We're an hour in, and we've only mentioned a couple villains. Mm. The Hulk has all the beef. It's very hard for anybody to stand up to him. 
And some of them are gamma characters, with like the Abomination, or the leader who has Hulk strength version of intelligence if that makes any sense yeah he's the, basically the brain and Hulk's supposed to be the prawn yeah and of course we mentioned the abomination yeah and then there's Zax Zakes yeah Zax well the problem is the Hulk is a villain yeah and or for so long even like a lot of his earliest issues he was hunted by the military mm -hmm. uh, they sent Wolverine after him you know what I mean yeah um Spider-Man uh, he we was, mentioned it in our Spider-Man episode. Yeah, you know, he, he like sporadically when he didn't have issues, he appeared as a villain or a misunderstood hero. Yeah, you know, it took a long time to break that mold. That's why that that um, astonishing or uh, that Doctor Strange run that ended up like molding. What was it? What was it again? It wasn't astonishing tales. It was uh, Chelsea suspense. Yeah, tell, that's why that that run was so important because it molded and it told more of a cohesive story with Hulk, where he wasn't just. Oh, I must run from the military. Leave yeah. Hulk alone. Yeah. You know? It gave more substance to the character where he wasn't just being chased by a pitchfork. Yeah. That's why the the big comparison to Frankenstein, you know, because he was smart at first, but after a while he just became a, like a creature yeah. that you just chased with a pitchfork, you know? Yeah. Which I think was detrimental to him earlier on. Yeah. It really gave him nowhere to run to. And I guess Rolf Reigns a Hulk villain? Also, I guess well, yeah. like even yeah. the Hulk's Avenger run, the original issue, Loki turns up against the Avengers. Yeah, you know, like always a misunderstood hero. Well, like Wolverine became his friend though. Yeah. Well, sometimes like it depends on the writer. It depends on the universe too. Yeah. Like it really depends. Like I guess Wolverine is sort of one of his friends. The thing. I guess yeah. kind of is his friend. Yeah, and also when the Hulk is smashing aimlessly, it's not unusual for the military to grab the thing. It's like, can you, you know, hold him off until he calms down? Like, he's having a tantrum. So, Thing has fought the Hulk many times, There's and a... it's not because I don't understand you, you know, it's like, you're clearly doing bad. It's like, hey, bud, you know, you're having a bad time. You're making everyone else have a bad time. Mm -hmm. I'm here to calm you down with my fist, if that makes any sense. There's a beautiful part, like in the Fantastic Four. I know it's kind of off track, but it was the, the Hickman run, mm -hmm. where uh, Torch supposedly died, and thing like it was one of those issues, a beautiful issue. I believe it had no wording at all, and thing was so sad, and Bruce Banner and Thor, and I think the Sentry, they take him to this uninhabited planet. And he turns into the Hulk, and he lets them fight them. You know, they're holding back their punch, but he lets the Hulk get his rage out. Yeah. Or, th I mean, not the Hulk, the Thing. Okay. You know, sorry. The Thing is so grief-stricken. Grief yeah. It was one of those times the Thing was giving into his, sorry, guys, Ben Graham, he was giving into his rage, you know. He was so quiet, so yeah. sad. And, like, like Thor, and then they all set up, and they all let Thing take his aggression out. And I think it was one of those powerful times where Bruce... Realized he had to give something back to Ben. Yeah. And I know it's just a sporadic appearance, but uh, I think it, like, it really says something about Bruce yeah. and the respect that he has for certain opponents. Yeah. Like they talk about that in the Great Pax run. That the reason he got rid of the, like he outsmarts the Red Hulk in the Great Pax run. You know, like totally hoodwinks him because Bruce is supposed to be dead at that point. He's mm -hmm. not. And then like he hoodwinks him and think he doesn't have his powers, you know. And I've, I think Bruce has always had a respect for his opponents. Yeah. Like a deep hatred, but a respect. Yeah. And I don't think he likes cheaters. Yeah. You know? And I think that was a, a nice gift, you know. It was a nice side thing they did. And I thought, like, it was important that Bruce was there for that scene, you know. It was so pivotal because Ben was so sad and grief-stricken. He needed to, you know, because he's not an ordinary man. Like, you're bringing up with Hulk and, you know, like, you know they call the thing in with his fist. Yeah. It was the same way. Yeah. Because I knew that he was going to explode from the grief. And I, I thought it was very pivotal that he was there for that. Yeah. Even though it was such a small scene, it was such a powerful scene. Yeah. Or even in the Infinity Gauntlet. Okay. This is a small little scene. But if you read the comics, it's Wolverine and Hulk are talking. And Hulk's on the fence about it. Mm -hmm. And Wolverine is the one that convinces him to do it. Yeah. Not for the good guys, but just for them, you know, to preserve everything. And it's just one of those scenes where you see another side of Hulk. More than the Savage, more than, you know... 
and that he does have friends, he does have connections, you know. Yeah. Even if they're few and far between. And it, it's it's nice in the times where they allow Bruce Banner to get back. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, sometimes it's very seldom, but it's very nice when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it speaks a lot to his character. Yeah. I always thought that, like, it's very rare, but it's very powerful when a writer can pull that off. Yeah. You know, where it touches the heartstrings, you know. Especially with a character like that, it's all about rage. Yeah. Oh, well, since you're bringing up a different Hulk, let's talk about a less reputable one. Um, the Hulk from Old Man Logan. Now, is that not Maestro Hulk? No. This is That's Old a Man, misunderstanding on my is, part. Though. This is Old Man Logan, the, the world where uh, the villains win. Oh, right, yeah, Red Skull owns like half yeah, of the, or like three quarters of the United States. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the Hulk has um, ended up breeding with She-Hulk. And they have a okay, bunch of so, incestuous so Hulklings. There's not a lot of females that can take Hulk dong. I guess uh, we one. mentioned, you know, on uh, Sicard. Yeah, Sicard, right? I don't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was her, her like great ninja she, chick. Yeah, yeah, she took uh, Hulk dong. Uh, interesting. Betty Ross did it for a while. Yes, that, that is true. That's impressive. And uh, are you familiar with Uma? Yeah, dude, I'm just telling you, I think they, yeah. they do that as a plot line, dude. Yeah. But are you familiar with Uma? Yeah. Uh, so Dormammu, if you're watching Doctor Strange movie, Dormammu's sister took Hulk Dong. As a matter of fact, took Hulk Dong better than uh, uh, Hulk can take Uma's vagina. And, like, yeah. I'm going to tell you this, dude. We talked about this earlier since you're talking about Dong. All right, I think uh, Hulk was so savage, and I think why Professor Hulk was so happy. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just what happened. It could be because she wasn't impressed. And uh, funny enough, once again, uh, Hulk beings being mental, since Hulk became so relaxed after getting a little good something something, changed back to Bruce Banner. And Bruce Banner was like, I don't know what happened. I have not been this relaxed in years. And he could not change into Hulk. You know, I've only heard of this series, and I'm like, I'm very glad I never read it. No, it's a Defenders Indefensible. It is a very I know, good. I, like I'm just saying, like I'm surprised. Like yeah, I love my Hulk mythology too, and I. It's a very I'm good. Shocked, um, like. Bruce Banner calls Namor the Little Mermaid, and Namor does not take that well. Smacks Bruce through a wall, and Hulk goes Hulk, and yeah, it's. Once again, the Defenders are not team players, so it's not unusual for them not to run in sync. As a matter of fact, yep. spoiler, Silver Surfer does not help the whole entire time because he found he out... really does. He found out Earth has surfers, and so he wants to talk to the surfers about the cosmos, not realizing they're just literally riding waves. It takes them, like, the whole series to realize, they're all just a bunch of idiots literally riding waves. You have to but realize that he himself... Is the idiot too? Yes, but um. So with old man Logan, um. Yeah, so, it becomes like this inbred Papa Hulk. Yeah, so. Creature. She Hulk takes Hulk Dong. Yeah, we never heard from her after that. Yeah. Oh, um, well, no, they get other women too pregnant. Yeah. Like in the issue. And, so. and you know, and even though they're kind of like hillbilly hulks and they're also lesser hulks like the deliverance like, hulks yeah it's weird yeah. because like Wolverine can easily take on all these lesser hulk yeah children. after he loses his shit after they kill his family so. yeah um but like on a more scientific note like it takes a while for that incestual thing to really start becoming retardation it absolutely shows up even if there's no mental issues like your uh, skull starts having funny shapes but uh Pretty much, it's doubles. Like, let's say you have like one percent. I think they just want to make this the darkest timeline kind of thing. Yeah, and that's what it is. Yeah. Dude. It's supposed to be like one of the darkest timelines. I think people even suggested that Hulk just flat out raped She Hulk for years. Yeah, that's kind of what everyone. Yeah, yeah. and but I, I like the part too where he swallows Wolverine. And Wolverine just pops out. Like, Rah. Mm -hmm. like, he's no maestro, dude. But you gotta put him up there as one of the most despicable. Hulks, you know. Yeah. Since we're talking about different Hulks, you know, from different realities, we had to throw that guy out there. He. Yeah. Well, I confused the two. 
like legit. Well, yeah, dude. I was wondering why he was so weak. I'm like, Maestro should be manhandling everything. Well, the interesting thing is, him and Old Man Logan, as he went toe to toe and the mood, um, like they kind of down, like Maestro was like kind of orchestrating, like doing what Maestro does. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a little older, I guess, from the point of Peter David. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess a little slower, but so was Old Man Logan. Man. It was interesting to see him fight. Yeah. A very cool. Um, I'm glad they brought the original Wolverine back, but it was interesting to see a throwback fight. Yeah. It's like watching uh, Hulk Hogan from the like late 90s take on Roddy Piper. It was just a match you just wanted to see, you know. You didn't give a shit if it was like 10 years older. You're just like, oh. And you know what? There's another Hulk. Hulk Hogan. You know, there's an issue in Marvel Comics Presents. I can't remember which one it was. It's a giant size issue, right? Where Hulk takes on Grey Hulk. I think it's Grey Hulk. You know, and Hulk Hogan, it's Hulk Hogan doing the ring, talking all kinds of shit, and the Hulk shows up, and he just eats his lunch. <clears throat> you know, like, he beats the crap. Out. Like, if it, it was like Hercule fighting Vegeta. Yeah. Like, you're a disgrace to the hog, and just throws him out, dude, and that's it. Yeah. He's a five print spread, dude, of him just going to town on Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Oh, man, dude, since you brought that up, dude, it's actually a Marvel Comic Presents, people. I can't remember which one it is. It's a big issue. And it Wolverine in the front like this, because I had all of them at one point, dude. So, I laughed so hard when I was a kid when I saw that. So are you telling me you like your comics at giant size? Oh, well, the giant size X Men, dude, you can go wrong on that. I mean, I think some of my most favorite comics are the giant size Man Thing. <laughs> Check it out. Actually, the Man Thing's cool, dude. He was another guy that appeared sporadically in Hulk, too. Yeah, it kind of makes sense being a more tragic character that guards a ley le line to the multiverse and that is not sentient per se but it's based off of empathetic yeah. emotions which I guess that could run a different interesting parallel of a strong green creature yeah it's a monster parallel yeah. it, it does not stuff. have its own emotions it <coughs> um, it piggybacks on everyone else's emotions so if you're yeah, happy like that thing it turns you to dust it's happy. you're afraid of it yeah so if you're afraid of it it produces I believe it was originally explained as an enzyme I don't know if that's how they're doing it but it secretes yeah, an it enzyme changes. that if it touches you you're bursting to flames. There's a... Um, and flames can get like for age. Oh. Since you're bringing up different creatures, Groot had his appearance in Hulk. Mm -hmm. Well, he was actually smarter. And so did Rocket the Squirrel. Yeah. Actually, a lot of the most valuable issues in Hulk are appearances from other creatures. Yeah. And uh, very fascinating. So you wouldn't have Guardians of the Galaxy now if it wasn't for the Incredible Hulk. Put it out there. Um, Hulk was also Spider Hulk at one point, since we're talking about alternate Hulks, mm -hmm. where he thought he killed him or went insane. He took on the Hulk personnel, or Hulk took on, the, I guess, the mask for a while. Like, Hulk, they've done a lot of goofy things with Hulk over the years. Yeah. Let's see what other Hulk do we have. Uh, do just, we have any other Hulks left? I don't know. I think we've reached the whole list. Mortal Hulk, yeah, you mentioned that. My sure of that right. Hulk. Um, Betty Russell, yeah. There's a nice, like I said, the Hulk has a lot of different runs. Like it was like before it got canceled. Of course, the Doctor Strange room we've been talking about great packs. Yeah. Peter David, you know, there was actually an issue of Hulk. It was back in the '90s where they were doing the foil things. It came out in silver and green, mm -hmm. but it actually had a complete psychological profile written by Doctor Samson. Yeah, they talked about everything in the Hulk, which is very cool to read. Um, I often enjoy the Hulk. He made his first appearance in May. Very much near and dear to my heart. Came from New Mexico. Gamma powered being. Always has a way of appearing in and out. Any other. Oh, the Avengers. We haven't talked about the movie. Let's, uh, oh. let's clear it up on that. Well, should we start by talking about the three? Well, starting with the Frank Cho movie. Should we just talk about the movies? Well, the. Yeah, let's just get into Avengers, dude. All right, just skip all that. Well, we talked about the Edward Norton movie. Yeah, um, which I kind of feel bad that Edward Norton didn't. Well, he was stay kind of a dick, Bruce. dude. He didn't make appearances, and yeah, you know but I mean? you know, uh, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, yeah Ruffalo. He, I like he's Ruffalo. doing really good. Like, yeah, he he works. I think he's did a good job, dude. Although I thought he got kind of panned over in Ragnarok. 
Mm-hmm. They could have did a little more with that. Yeah. But I like Ruffalo. I like the build-up for it. Avenger is good. I'm, I, maybe I'm going to solo movie. I'm hoping. Yeah. And once again, going back to the psychological, as it always does, you know, it's like, oh, I'm always angry. That's how I control it. But yeah, it's mental. That's why it's I think mental. it's interesting the Avengers Infinity War, he was having problems. Yeah. Because he was scared. He wasn't angry. Well, people are theorizing that that's actually Loki. And that's like he can't actually Hulk out. The you know, that's people theorizing, but once again, the psychological thing it works out perfectly. Like yeah. Hulk, you know, he did not smash well enough, and now he Hulk doesn't know how he feels. He's scared. <coughs> he's angry. But like, he I feel it'd know be a cheat. It. it feels Loki. I really do. Yeah. If it, like I feel it'd be a cheat. It's a nice character build. It's a nice change. Yeah. And it makes sense with the Hulk mythology. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's our whole, um, you have anything else? I absolutely do. Right, Hulk I fought a man, a very Superman. Oh, you mean the DC thing. So, a few mm. times Marvel and DC has crossed over, and they had it's their heroes fight Armageddon. each other because misunderstandings, or they have to get whatever MacGuffin item, like, the, the second or time around. Or because those two beings so, that represented different sides of the universe and they had to fight to the death. Yeah, so now one debate is always you know, who's stronger, Superman or Hulk. Most people default Hulk is stronger, that's Hulk's thing. And at least in when Hulk and Superman did fight and they started with fist fighting and Superman's like, this guy's punches really hurt. He's beating me. I cannot win in a fist fight. So Superman just flies straight up and I beams him until Hulk loses. You know, it's cheap, but like I kind of like how it shows. It's like well, in the Hulk DC match. versus like Marvel thing, he won against Professor Hulk, not like Savage Hulk or Wolverine. That's Hulk. true. Well, and well, once again, at least with the fist fighting for strength, Professor Hulk was uh, outmatching Superman. Yeah, it's this. just. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like I said, I'm not the biggest Superman fan. So, should we talk about Superman one day? Yeah, we'll agree to disagree on that one. Yeah. So that's the last thing I wanted to talk about with Hulk. Yep. So, did, uh, did you want to talk about anything? Well, I'm gonna say this: True Believers. R.I.P. to Stanley, Mr. Kirby. Mm-hmm. Did I throw that out there? And for you all Hulk fans out there, stay smashing it. Stay doing what you do. Comic Outlaw, Magnus. Coming at you again, Outlaw's Corner, and hit us up and we'll catch you on the flip side. Later. Laters.